So I'll pay for this out of pocket and can say whatever I want. But this is not a review, and that may come later. Inside the box, we find a manual, some foam, some paper, who cares? It's various parts, a USB cable, some other cable, more cables. Rails, feels like anodized aluminium. The air compressor, a hose for the air compressor. Ooh, safety glasses. Looking stylish. Ooh, more foam. And the mostly pre-assembled orthogonal rails. And now, what we've all been waiting for. 4 times 6 equals 20 watts of diode laser. Mmm. Now let's get this thing together. Lay out the frame as specified by the manual. Now following the manual to a T will result in a slight problem, but we'll get back to that later. The parts come in numbered bags corresponding to your current step in the process. The hex bolt will slot through the rails and engage the threads in the spanners. And the threads are aluminium, so make sure you don't over tighten. A good rule of thumb is finger tight quarter turn. With the frame assembled, it's time to put on some feet. And in bag number two, we find some long and two short bolts. Pick the long first and grab a leg. The holes only line up if the right foot is in the right place, so you can't go wrong. Now for the problem with the manual, as mentioned earlier. That's just no way for the rollers to get past the end stop. You could remove it temporarily, or just turn the frame around, loosen the feet a bit, and then mount it from the other side. Make sure that both end stops end up in the lower left. Then it's back on with the feet. Now, there are only three feet, the fourth is a part for the control unit. Here is where the short bolts come in. Now it's time for the timing belt, which will also require these clamping nuts. The belt is threaded over the gear and under the rollers. Same procedure for the other side. Now the clamp nuts can be a bit finicky, but with some help from the allen keys we can get it in place. On the ends, you can just shove it in. Mm, you should really use some snips for this, but uh, I live in a pocket knife world. And you seal the deal with the plug. Mm. Yeah, the display just snaps on with magnets. And then you turn it the right way around. The display cable connects to the right side of the control unit. And it's time for some cable management. First up, we have the infamous end stop. Following along the cable, we find a 6-pin connector for the stepper. The 2-pin connector loops around and goes to the second end stop. The first section of the cable is then zip-tied to the rolling bracket. The remaining cable is then zip tied to the other bracket at the very end of the cable. 6 pin for the stepper and 4 pin for the laser. The lace module itself slides nicely on the C rail and locks in place with a knob on the front. Then plug in the 4 pin connector. 
With power cable in hand, it's plug and play. Hmm, seems to be working, so let's get on with the compressor. That's a split cable for the power supply that lets you connect both the controller and the compressor. The top plug is for the hose. Now let's see if there's anything on the SD card. They include some 3mm plywood for you to test on and using the depth stop bracket thingy we can set the correct laser focus. Hmm, file said butterfly something. Oh, yeah, that's a butterfly with something. With everything working, it's time to do some work of your own. So, here we are in Blender. Hit 8 to select everything, then delete it. We don't need it. Hit 7 on the numpad to change the view. Shift A adds an object, and let's pick a circle. But we actually don't want the circle, so we make it an octagon. Then hit R to rotate, type 22.5 and enter. So, the plan is to make a simple coaster. This is our cut line, but we need some decor, so add a circle. This time we actually want the circle, so we set the vertex count to some higher order of 2, let's say 32. Then hit the tab to enter edit mode, and S to scale. If we hit E to extrude, we get the surface. Oh, another useful function is Control R, that segments the surface, and scroll wheel the number of divisions. Now, all of this is not really necessary. I'm mostly dropping some tips and tricks for how to use Blender. For 2D, you can probably manage with Inkscape. But if you have something 3D or something with many components, Blender really shines through. So let's assume we have several components. Actually, let's just select the border, hit Tab, then F to fill, and we get the surface. Let's just move it down by hitting G. So, now that we sort of have several components, we may want to distinguish these. And if we scroll down to the material section, we can create a new material. And ignoring all of this, because it's render related. But down in the viewport section, we can set the color we see here in the editor. After finding a color you like, you select the other object and create a new material. And as before, we set the viewport color. Mm, yeah, let's just make it black. And you can also set alpha. It doesn't matter. Now, one of Blender's many strengths is the plethora of add-ons. So if we go to File, then Preferences, you find the add-ons in the menu to the left. I'm going to make some vulnerable pattern, so I type in cell fracture. Make sure it's checked off. Then we can go to object under quick effects. We now find cell fracture. You can fiddle around with the settings, but here I set noise to 0.5. Then untake sharp edges and apply split edges. I also set the scale to 0.6 for the X and Y. And since it's supposed to be flat, the C scale is set to zero. We then hit OK and sit back while my computer lags. Now, as we can see, Blend made all of these individual objects, but we just want one object. So we select the other. Hit H to hide it. We then hit A to select everything, then Control J to join them. Now that it's one object, we hit Tab for edit mode, then A followed by X to delete only the faces. To clean things up a bit, uh, select everything, then on the mesh we go clean up, then select merge by distance. You can mess around with merge distance till you find something reasonable. And the rest you do by hand. A useful tip is to use the edge select, then remove the edges you don't like. When you have something satisfactory, we go to object, then convert, and select grease pencil. We can play around with the thickness of a grease pencil. Mm, yeah, 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 that's fine. Now, if we hit Alt 
which we unhide the hidden objects. One of these is the original circle from the self fracture, so let's just delete that. So laces are all about custom stuff, right? So let's add some text. Hit tab to edit, and I'm just going to use my initials. Down in the text section, we can change the font. S to scale, and after some fiddling, we get something somewhat usable. Um, we can do the final touch-ups in Inkscape. Now, just as before, we convert the text to Grease Pencil. This is because only Grease Pencil can export as an SVG file. Speaking of export, orient the object so that you see it the way you want it. Then hit File, then Export, then Grease Pencil as SVG. You can see I've already exported the Bonomori pattern, so this time it's the coaster text. Then hit Export to SVG. Uh, you have to save the Blender file before you're doing this. Then we select the border. Um, we need to remove the fill before converting. We've done this before, but once more. Object, Convert, Grease Pencil, then set the thickness to 1, then File, Export, and Grease Pencil to SVG. Now, in Inkscape, we locate our SVG files. I may have scaled the board already and forgot to hit Record, but for starters, change units to millimeters. Then select the border, and we check the lock aspect ratio. That way changing the width also changes the height. But I want a coast to 90mm in diameter. Now the laser has the origin at the lower left. So we have to move the object up by the height of the object. Now, with our object selected, we go Edit, then hit Resize Page to Selection. Next, hit File, then Import, select the Vonroy, then Open. Now, here we see the only issue with Blender. The SVG scale depends on the size in the viewport. But until Blender gets an update, or you're using some add-on, Inkscape will get things in the right scale for us. You can drag things around by hand, but for precision you can type in the scale and XY coordinates. Then we import the text and figure out our final layout. Oops. When you have something workable, shift select both text and Vonroy and check export select only. Oh yeah, we should go to the page section. Check the preview that things look right. Now, in my experience, for engraving, laser gobel works best with PNGs. Take note of the 96 dpi, add a name, then hit export, then select the border. This time we select SVG, give it a unique name, then hit export. Now, if you're going to run by USB and laser gobel, you should remove the display to avoid interrupts. Since we're going to be cutting, we need to lift the workpiece up a bit. I'm just using some scrap aluminium profiles. The workpiece itself is about 8 mm of Sitka spruce from my sawmill. A bit of sanding smooths it out, and we're ready for laser gobble. So I check the port and hit connect. If all went well, we get out the bottom menu and hit home. Blink is useful for indexing, but for alignment we can use the focus function. To the lower left we have the jogging section, we can use this to get our lace in position.
When we have it in the right spot, we hit set zero, and the current laser position is now the new origin. We now got the file, then open. Now the order we import matters, and we want to do the engraving first, so we import that one first. For something like a grayscale picture, you could play around with the brightness and contrast, but since we have a block in white, none of this matters. Uh, you could play around with line density and stuff, but let's just get on with the video. You then get a window for the speed and laser power. Now, usually for engraving, the speed would be between 2005 and 3000 millimeters per minute, but I want a deep carving and set it for 1800 and leave it at 80%. Oh, yeah, we also need to check auto size and type 96 for the DPI. Then we hit create. Next up we hit file, then append. Not open, but append. Now we select the border, and since an SVG is basically a toolpath file, we only get the burn setting. In the catalog there's a bunch of presets to choose from, so you'll probably find something about right. We then hit apply, then create, and if we hit the frame button, the laser would trace an outline of our object. And if we're satisfied, it's time for an epilepsy warning, and we hit run. If you didn't go all the way through, reopen only the border with some appropriate setting and hit run. If there's any bird or limb, just take it off with some fine sandpaper. And there you go. Hope anyone found this useful. I will probably do a review in the future, so subscribe for that. Or leave a like to stroke my ego. <laughs> Thanks for watching.